We have used GX Server throughout this course to develop an application for a travel agency. The first time we used the product, we uploaded the knowledge base created to a server, with the purpose of allowing GX Server to automatically manage it from that point onwards. We've also used the commit action to update the new definitions and changes made by developers to the KB located on the server. Now we will explain in detail the basic actions and concepts involved in using GX Server. Let's start by supposing that Mike wishes to join the development team. The first thing to do will be to synchronize with the server KB, meaning that he will have to create his own local copy from the server. To do this, he will select File, New, Knowledge Base from GX Server. Mike must have the server address in advance and then enter it, and then go on to select the corresponding KB. Then he will have to indicate a name for the local KB created from the server. We will call it Travel Agency Mike. And then he'll press Create. Mike will then receive a local copy of the server's current KB, and from this point he will be synchronized with it. Each developer works on his own personal copy of the KB, without the need for connections or interactions between developers. From this point, Mike will be working on his local KB. Now let's suppose that Peter, one of the developers who has been working on the travel agency application, defines, in his own local KB, a new transaction called employee. To record the agency's employees. He defines employee ID, employee name, employee address, and employee phone. He saves and he also defines two rules to control the mandatory entry of each employee's name and telephone. and saves. After saving, Peter decides that this functionality is concluded and wants to share it and add it to the full solution on the server, for which purpose he must execute the commit action. To do this, he selects the menu Knowledge Manager, Team Development. And from this commit tab, it's possible to view the list of objects that were modified or that have been defined in his local KB and are still to be included on the server. There is the possibility of selecting certain objects to be sent to the server, which means doing a partial commit. When we perform a commit operation, we must add a comment describing the changes added, which is then included in the server's log. The knowledge sent to the server is consolidated with the existing knowledge, and the developer who executed the commit operation receives a feedback. This Recent Comments button deploys a window with the latest comments entered. The History tab shows a record of what has been sent with comments and the set of objects. Let's get back to the Commit tab. For Peter to enter the corresponding comment and do the commit. and he will press the commit button.
Let's now go to Mike's local KB. How can Mike receive in his local KB the changes made by Peter or any other developer involved in this development? To receive changes made in the server, he will have to deploy the dialog box, Knowledge Manager, Team Development, and then select the Update tab. In this Update tab, when he selects the Preview button, he will see both the new objects and those which underwent changes. He may choose to receive all changes or select only certain changes. When he presses the Update Selected button, Afterwards, he received what he has selected. Now Mike will also see in his local KB the employee transaction. So now locally, Mike has the same definitions that may be found in the centralized KB in GX server. So, what would happen if both Mike and Peter decide to continue adding attributes to the employee transaction? For instance, Let's suppose that Mike decides to add the employee salary attribute and he adds these changes. Now let's get back to Peter's KB and suppose that in his employee transaction Peter decides to add the employee photo attribute and goes on to save these changes. Peter first tries to do the commit action, so he goes to Knowledge Manager, Team Development, and enters the comment, and then presses commit. Now let's go to Mike's KB. Mike doesn't know what Peter did, and since he has made a new definition of his own, we decide to include it on the server and also perform the commit action. And he presses commit. And what happens? Genexus informs him that there is a new definition in GX Server regarding the object he's trying to upload. So prior to doing his commit, he will have to do an update operation to receive those changes in his local KB. So he presses update. Now when he opens the employee transaction, he finds the employee photo attribute that has been included, meaning that the corresponding merge has taken place. Now Mike may proceed to perform his commit. So finally, in GX Server, they will have the full definition of the employee transaction. But, is there any way we can view the KB that is built in the server? Yes, there is. Through the URL of GX Server's location, we can access its web console and view the knowledge bases published. Once we're authenticated with our GX technical user, we have a view of the list of KBs published. When we enter our KB, we can see statistical data as well as the record of comments entered. To view the KB's status, we select the Knowledge Base tab, and from there, we may verify that the employee transaction, in fact, has all the definitions included in it. We can then view the full definition of its structure and also the definition of its rules. To exit this view of the KB, we press Logout. 
So far, these are the basic concepts and actions for using GX Server. In an upcoming video, we will present cases of conflict, version management, and security, among other topics.